Man, we got a real boil here too, which is nice. Hey, Tim here, and we are making stove top mac and cheese in a cast iron skillet. This dish was inspired by one of my childhood comfort foods. I think everyone's childhood comfort food, boxed mac and cheese with hot dogs and peas. In this recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make it a little more grown up, a little more elevated, but still simple and easy enough to make during the week. So let's get started. I've got my cast iron skillet preheating here on medium heat. Because the material itself is so dense and it conducts heat so efficiently, that medium heat is pretty much good for everything. So while that's preheating, I'm gonna slice sausage. I'm using uh, chicken sausage and dewy flavored instead of hot dogs. It's a little bit more delicious, a little more grown up. I'm gonna slice it on a bias, which this just means an angle, you know? It's, uh, I do it for two reasons. One, it's super fancy uh, and looks cool. And then the second reason is when you slice something at a bias at an angle, you have more surface area on the sausage itself, which is nice because more surface area means more searing, means more flavor, more browning, it's better. So I've got three sausages here. Gonna slice all of these up. Okay, so I'm going to add three tablespoons of oil, which I know is like more oil than you think you need for searing sausage, and it is, but I'm gonna use that oil to make a roux later on, which is a way to thicken the sauce. We'll talk about it. Okay, in the sausage goes. Ha ha ha, good. I'm just gonna stir this around. What's happening right now is that the oils from the sausage are mingling with the oil from the pan, and it's gonna flavor everything really well. This will take about four to six minutes. While that is browning, I'm going to grate some cheese. Here's what I've got. Eight ounces of cheddar cheese and two ounces of Parmesan. Anytime I'm making, especially if I'm making macaroni and cheese, I'm going to grate my own cheese for a couple of reasons. One, it's just better. And two, it'll mix into the sauce so much easier. I mean, think of it this way. The same reason if you buy like a bag of grated cheese and none of the little cheeses stick together in the bag, that's the same reason that it's not gonna melt into your sauce. You want something really creamy, really dreamy, comforting, delicious. While you're grating, just give your sausage a little zhuzh, stir it around. Don't worry about like flipping over each little piece of sausage. If some sausage is more charred than another, it's not, not a huge concern. It's kind of like when you're cooking with bacon fat. The bacon fat itself is flavoring everything up. It's really good. Now, Parmesan. Parmesan has a little bit more of a like savory flavor to it than the cheddar. It'll just taste kind of rounder and more full. I'm kind of one of those people that I think if you're gonna add cheese to something, add your whatever cheese it is and then add Parmesan. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reserve one quarter cup of the Parmesan cheese. This is gonna come in handy later when I have this crispy crust topping for the mac. So I've got quarter cup of Parmesan and I'm mixing it with panko breadcrumbs. Okay, eh, it's been about, that feels like four to six minutes. It's brown. So taking the sausage out, and you can like smell, this is an andouille sausage, so it's got a lot of spice in it. It's really delicious. All right, set that aside, use it for later. Okay, so the pan is still on and I've got the oil in here, and now I'm going to make a roux. We'll take one quarter cup of flour. Roux is a French technique it is basically a way to thicken sauce. It sounds fancy, but it's really not super simple. All I'm gonna do is cook flour in oil. You can use butter if you want to, any kind of fat. And I'm also gonna be scraping up like the stuck on bits here from the sausage. I wanna cook it for like a minute, minute or two, and it's gonna start to smell like toasty. Okay, now I'm going to add two cups of milk. Oh! One and three quarter cups of milk. 
All right, let's see. We dropped about, yeah, like that much milk, I think, is on the counter right now. I've got half a cup of heavy cream. Just going to make it rich and delicious. And then cream cheese. Cream cheese is just going to make everything rich and creamy. We're going to get it to a simmer. We're going to cook everything together. Oh, I also want to add some Dijon mustard rub, which I would say is the crucial ingredient to making macaroni and cheese. It's not going to make everything taste like mustard, I swear. It's basically the difference between having cheese with macaroni and having like mac and cheese. So now we whisk everything together. Nice thing about cast iron is that it holds on to heat really well. So bringing something up to a simmer, if your pan is already hot, doesn't take that long, even if you're adding cold milk to it, which is nice. So I'm gonna let this come to a simmer. It's gonna start to get thick. You can already start to see the bubbles. Now I'm going to add my pasta to the boiling water over here. I've got two teaspoons of salt that I'm gonna add to the water, which again, seems like a lot, it's not, but right now is the only chance you really have to season the pasta water. And three cups of pasta. Okay, so I'm going to cook the pasta for one minute less than it says on the box. And now I'm going to start adding my cheese to this thick, kind of bubbly mass here. I'm gonna do it in stages and just kind of add the cheese, whisk the cheese, add the cheese, whisk the cheese, that kind of thing. Now, anytime you're making macaroni and cheese at home from scratch, there's always a minute where you think this is not good, this is not gonna turn out. It's all gritty looking, it's kind of coarse, it doesn't look smooth. And there are two ways that I'm going to fix that and make sure that this is creamy and rich. One of them is the cream cheese that I already added. And the second thing, which is amazing and crucial, is the water from the pasta itself. It's super starchy from all that pasta, and it's going to somehow, through starch and magic, just smooth everything out. I've added all the cheese, and you can see, like it still looks kind of gritty. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Pasta water. It'll fix everything. Okay, the pasta is cooked, but not too cooked, which is crucial. So I'm gonna finish cooking it in the sauce itself, and we're gonna do it. Don't worry about straining it too much, because it'll work. The nice thing about this pot is that you don't have to dump out all the water in order to strain out your macaroni, so I can just scoop out the water, which is exactly one half cup of pasta water. I know because this is one half cup, so it's easy to measure. Then I'm going to add cooked sausage. Throw that right in there. A little sausage grease. Delicious. And peas. All right, so I'm gonna cut the heat. Now I'm gonna mix everything together. Okay, come here, come here. You've gotta check this out. The sauce now, before it was gritty and grainy and I was like, this is not good, it's not looking good, but look at it now. It's like smooth and rich and amazing. Most of the time when people are making macaroni and cheese in a cast iron skillet, they bake it. Uh, but I think that when you bake mac and cheese, it's kind of a different thing. It's got, it's like firm, it's dense. You can almost like slice it out, you know? And I want this childhood memory of like stovetop macaroni and cheese. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my Parmesan and panko, sprinkle everything on top, and then I'm gonna broil it. This will give you the same kind of crispy crust and texture that baked macaroni and cheese has, but it'll still be saucy and creamy and delish. So we're gonna pop this in the broiler. It happens really quickly. In she goes, right up top near the burner. One to two minutes under the broiler. Do a lot of peeking, do a lot of checking, make sure everything's good. Yeah, it's good. It is ready. Just a little bit of crisp. A little bit of crunch. Listen, I grew up on a box of macaroni and cheese. I get it. Sometimes you just need that 
easy win at the dinner table. But this stovetop version of mac and cheese, it gives you that same easy win and it uses fresh ingredients. It has that beautiful grown up kind of flair and that same comfort food flavor everyone will love. You're gonna love it.